Hello everyone. Welcome to the eighth lecture of the course. In the previous lecture, we had talked about right understanding. We saw that there are five dimensions of a unit, its form, property, natural characteristic, innateness, and coexistence. And right understanding essentially is seeing the natural characteristic, innateness, and coexistence. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the knower, known, and the process of knowing. So we had begun with uh, discussing the human desire, that is continuous happiness. And we saw that continuous happiness is ensured by right understanding, right feeling, and right thought. And right feeling and right thought combined together is what is called as resolution. And we had seen the nine components of resolution. And now we're talking about right understanding. So we had seen that right understanding, that is knowing, is to see the reality as it is. So there is a knower. And who is the knower? It is the self. I am the knower. You are the knower. It's not the body that is the knower. There is something to be known. And what is to be known? The entire existence. The human being has to be known. The plants have to be known. The air, water, soil has to be known. The animals and birds have to be known. The space has to be known. So the entire existence has to be known. And when you go to understand and know the entire existence, so it can be clubbed into three different heads. So we have to have knowledge of the human being. So when I go to know the human being, I have to know the self as well as the body and the coexistence of the two. Then I have to know the entire existence, human being being a part of it. So when it comes to talk about the entire existence, so we have to talk about the space and nature. Nature is submerged in space. Nature has four orders, physical order, bio order, animal order, and human order. And there are two kinds of units in the nature, material units and conscious units. And thirdly, we have to know the human conduct. Human conduct means knowing the participation of human being in the entire existence. So from here, we can draw one conclusion that knowing is something definite. The content of knowing is also something definite and it can be completed. It's not that knowing can never get completed. And it's also not that knowing is something vague. It is very much definite. It is very much universal. Everybody has to know the same thing. Only that we have to enter into the process of knowing. And what is the process of knowing? So essentially it is self-exploration, but if you try to elaborate it, then the process of knowing that is understanding can be put in this way also that knowing is essentially awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. These are three activities in the self, contemplation, understanding and realization. And this is the process of knowing. Essentially knowing means to activate these activities Every self has the potential of these activities, but when I go to explore within myself, when I go to validate in my living, then essentially I am able to activate these activities. And these are contemplation, understanding and realization. Now, what is the content of contemplation? It is a natural characteristic of a unit. So every unit has a natural characteristic. The self also has a natural characteristic. The body also has a natural characteristic. Every unit in all these four orders has a natural characteristic and it is to be contemplated upon. Similarly, the innateness of every unit has to be understood. So we had a look at the four orders of nature. We also had a brief look over the natural characteristic, innateness and coexistence of these four orders. And essentially, if you see the content of realization is to see the coexistence. So seeing the coexistence is realization. Seeing the innateness is understanding. Seeing the natural characteristic is contemplation. In other words, when I talk about natural characteristic, I have to contemplate upon the relationship. So there's relationship in the nature. Every unit in the nature is related to every other unit and that has to be contemplated upon. Similarly, every unit is innately in harmony and that has to be understood and every unit is there in coexistence and that has to be realized. So the content of knowing can be put in these words also that essentially I have to know relationship, harmony and coexistence. And the process of knowing is awakening to the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization. Are you able to see this? 
are you able to see that the content of knowing is very much definite the process of knowing is very much definite this knowing has to get accomplished in the self itself so it has to get accomplished in myself yourself every other self and this is the way the self develops this is the way the knowing gets complete so we can very much talk about the content of knowing we can very much talk about the process of knowing and this is something which is going to be invariant something definite something universal i hope you are able to see this but you can pause for a moment and have a look at this now going further we have already seen that the self is the seer the observer the one who understands knows isn't it it's not the body we had seen that self is a conscious unit it is ultimately the one that is going to know that is the one which is going to understand going to realize going to contemplate the body is merely a physiochemical unit and that is working as an instrument in the process so when i'm talking to you this body is working as an instrument for me but it is me who has to understand it is you who has to understand the body is only assisting yourself as an instrument so self is the one who pays attention who sees who observes and in the previous lecture we had seen the meaning of seeing what essentially seeing means so when you say sees it has the whole range depending upon where you are seeing so now we had seen that there are five dimensions of a unit so one can pay attention to the form isn't it the shape size volume all those things density one can pay attention <clears throat> one can pay attention to the property that is the effect of one unit on another unit and one can also pay attention to the relationship harmony and coexistence so when we use this word seeing ultimately it has to be understood it has to be known what is the content of seeing are we paying attention to merely the form and property or we are also paying attention to the natural characteristic to the innate harmony to the coexistence so when we say sees it has the whole range depending upon from where you are seeing and this could be the range so it may mean testing or selecting so this is an activity in the self testing and selecting when you are putting this word seeing at the level of testing and selecting so you are seeing the shape of the reality a unit when you are comparing or analyzing some other reality with this particular reality when you are comparing or analyzing some other reality then it may be the case that you are seeing the effect of this reality on some other so going further when we say sees it has the whole range depending upon where you are seeing so it may mean testing or selecting now this is activity in the self so when we are testing or selecting essentially if you see you are seeing the shape of the reality the unit isn't it similarly when you are comparing or analyzing you are seeing the effect of this reality on some other reality when you are contemplating or imaging you are seeing the participation of this reality in relationship in order when you are understanding or you are activating determination you are seeing the innateness harmony of this reality and when you are realizing or authenticating you are seeing the coexistence the submergence of this reality so we can use this word seeing in multiple ways in normal use if you see when we use the word see it is generally to mean uh, sensing the form of a unit so when you say that i am seeing this building in front of me so you are getting the taste of the sight of the building which is there in front of you and you are calling it as seeing but when we are analyzing the building the structure then you are essentially working at the level of analyzing or comparing and then you are trying to see the effect of this reality on some other reality how come this building got constructed what is it made of how does one brick go over the other to make the building how does the structure remain as it is so you are trying to analyze you are comparing two buildings and you are comparing two buildings and you are saying that one is shorter one is taller then you are ultimately comparing within yourself so going further we can talk about the knower that is the self in detail 
so when we say sees it has the whole range depending upon where you are seeing so it may mean either of these five things so it may be the case that you are only seeing the shape of the reality so you are just selecting and testing so you are testing the shape of the reality and you have made a selection for that isn't it for example a building is there in front of me and i say that i am seeing the building so i'm just seeing the shape the form of the building isn't it and that is testing the form of the building and i have made that selection now when i see the effect of this reality on some other reality then i am seeing at the level of comparing or analyzing so what effect does wind have on that building now when i'm trying to see this i am analyzing something isn't it and i am comparing two realities the wind and the building i may also compare two different buildings and the effect of wind on two different buildings so there i am not only testing i am also analyzing and comparing so this could be another level of seeing the third level could be when i am seeing the participation of this reality in relationship so the building is a unit of physical order and it has its participation in the entire nature in the entire existence so it may be the case that i am seeing the participation of that physiochemical unit in the entire nature and existence and there i am contemplating there i am imaging something which is related to the participation of the unit in the entire nature and existence i may also see at the level of understanding so i may see the innateness the innate harmony of this particular reality so the building is innately in harmony and i am trying to understand it and when i understand this then my whole imagination gets guided by this and that is something called as determination so i may also see this particular reality in terms of its innateness the harmony and i can also see the coexistence the submergence of this reality in the entire existence and i may also see its coexistence its submergence in space so there i am operating at the level of realization and authentication so these are different levels of seeing now generally when we use the word seeing we loosely use it to mean like testing the form right going further we can analyze going further we can see the participation we can see the harmony and we can see the submergence essentially when you say knowing knowing is to see the participation the innate harmony and the coexistence that is submergence so self is the seer and it includes the whole range of it so at what level am i seeing this is something to be made out am i only testing the shape or am i only analyzing the property or i am seeing the three that is participation harmony and coexistence so with all this put together we are able to see a reality in its completeness major part being seen through the contemplation understanding and realization so the activity in me that sees the participation is the contemplation the activity in me that understands the innateness is the understanding and the activity in me that realizes its coexistence its submergence is realization so we are able to see a reality in its completeness then only we are able to have the complete meaning of being a knower isn't it so try to see whether these five different types of seeing do take place in you or not so to begin with you may only be operating at the level of selecting and testing or analyzing and comparing or at the most imaging and what remains to be done is contemplation understanding and realization and this is what we are working for to activate these activities in the self so that we are able to see the reality in its completeness so think over it now what is to be known so the whole existence is to be known and there are many formulations of what is to be known basically it is having the right understanding or having the knowledge of the entire existence uh, one of these formulations is there in terms of knowing the following human being existence and human conduct so i need to know the human being and that is to say i need to know myself so i need to know the self the body and the coexistence of self and body when i am able to know myself as a human being i am able to know the entire human race i am able to know the human being in its entirety 
I can also know the other entities in nature. Some units are there in the physical order, some units are there in the bio order, some units are there in the animal order. And this is also to be known. So I need to know each of the orders. I need to know the material units as well as the conscious units. And going further, I need to know the submergence of all these units in the space, which is all pervading, which is unlimited. Being in space, every unit of nature is energized, self-organized, and recognizing its relation with other units and fulfilling it. So I need to know all this. And that is to know the existence. And when I am able to know the human being and the existence, then I need to know the participation of human being in this entire existence. And that is what is called as human conduct. So what is my relation with the other human being? What is my relation with air, water, soil? What is my relation with animals and birds? This also I need to know. So this formulation is keeping in mind the human existence and human living at the center. And further, the process of knowing when you go to understand the existence requires that first we know the self, that is the knower. So knowing starts with knowing the self. So I need to know myself, which is the knower. Unless I am clear about myself, I will be deluded about other activities also. I will be unclear about other units in the nature also. Are you able to see this? Unless you are clear about yourself, how can you know something else? Because the preconditioning that you carry within yourself about yourself will be coloring your perception about the other entities in reality. Isn't it? Do you see this? Only when we know the knower and we are sure that knower has developed the competence to know the existence as a whole completely, then only we can be sure of its knowledge of existence. So we want to know the existence, but unless we know the human being, the knower, how can we know the other units in the nature? How can we know the space? And you'll see that the more you try to know the self, you are able to know the other units in nature also, because the self is a conscious unit, and there are only two kinds of units, conscious and material. So the more I try to investigate the conscious unit, I'm able to know the material units also. So knowing the self helps me know my relation with the body helps me know the material units in the nature. And since I am submerged in space, it helps me know the coexistence also. And in this process of knowing, I'm able to know my relation with other human beings and the rest of nature also. So it all begins with knowing the knower, that is the human being. Now, if you look at the process of knowing, so it is awakening to the activity of contemplation, understanding and realization. So this process of knowing is basically awakening to these three activities whereby we can have the clarity that is understanding of relationship, harmony and coexistence of one unit and ultimately every unit, the entire nature. So here again, I'll say that I need to know my participation. I need to know my innateness. I need to know my submergence in space. And when I go to do that, so I'm able to know the relationship, I'm able to know the harmony, I'm able to know the coexistence. And with this, I'm able to know the other units in nature also, I'm able to know the entire existence also. So one claim that can be made from here is that I can know the entire existence. Of course, I cannot collect information about the form and property of every unit in this nature. But I can of course know the nature in terms of its innateness, in terms of its participation and coexistence. Are you able to see this? that yes, we can know the entire nature. We cannot collect information about the form and property of each and every unit in the nature, but we can know their innateness. We can know their participation. We can know their submergence. I hope this makes sense to you. Now, what is realization? So realization is there of coexistence and that is seeing the existence as coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space. So the units, which are either material or consciousness are submerged in space. All these units are limited in size, are active and are, as an activity within itself. And if you look at the space, it is no activity. It is unlimited in size. It is all pervading. And every unit is submerged in this space. Next, understanding would mean understanding of harmony. That is the self-organization in the nature. So seeing the innateness, the self-organization of harmony the self-organization or harmony of one unit and ultimately of every unit, the entire nature. 
So innately, every unit is there in harmony. I am in harmony within because I naturally accept to be in harmony. The body is in harmony. Every other entity in the nature is in harmony. I only need to understand that. And contemplation means to be able to see the participation in the larger order, that is the relationship. So seeing the participation in the larger order of one unit and ultimately of every unit, the entire nature. So as an essence, we have to activate these three activities of contemplation, understanding and realization. I hope you are able to see this. So these three activities are there potentially in you. They are very much there as a potential, but the potential has to be utilized. When I utilize this potential, then only I'm able to know the reality. Now, detailing further about this. So when you talk about realization, so we are able to see that existence is coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space. Now, when we say submergence, there are three things to be understood, to be realized. That, first of all, every unit in nature is energized being in space. So we can see that every unit has energy. I have energy, my body has energy, you have energy. Each and every physiochemical unit has energy. How come? If you try to see, you'll see that every unit is energized being in space. Similarly, every unit is self-organized being in space. Every unit exists in a definite order. So if you see the body is such an orderly unit, you are an orderly unit. Isn't it? The plants, animals, and other units in the physical order, they are all units and they are all self organized. How come being in space? Similarly, you can see that every unit is recognizing its relationship with other units and fulfilling it being in space. So, space is there at the base, space is there being in which every unit very naturally is energized, self-organized and recognizing its relationship and fulfilling it. Now looking at the process of knowing that is awakening to the activity of realization. So what does realization mean? I realize the coexistence that is submergence of nature in space. So I'm able to see that existence is coexistence, which is in the form of units submerged in space. Now you can see that every unit being in space is energized self-organized and recognizing its relationship and fulfilling it. So we can see that every unit is energized. I am energized, you are energized, my body is energized, your body is energized. Every unit in the physiochemical order, every unit in the physical order is energized. Every plant is energized, every animal and bird is energized. Now how come every unit is energized? So if you look at it closely, you will see that it is energized being in space. Similarly, every unit is self-organized. So if you look at this body, this body is such a self-organized unit, right? We have talked about it earlier also. The self is also a self-organized unit. The moment I have any feeling or thought, which is not in accordance with my natural acceptance, I feel unhappy. And the moment I'm able to have my activities in line with my natural acceptance, I feel happy. This is being self-organized. So every conscious unit is self-organized. Every material unit, which only has the activity of recognizing and fulfilling is self-organized. And how come? Being in space. Similarly, being in space, every unit is recognizing its relationship with other units and fulfilling it. You see the whole nature, the way the plants, the trees, the animals, the birds, the soil, air, water, they are all recognizing their relationship and fulfilling very naturally, isn't it? How come is it happening being in space? So when I'm able to see this, I'm able to see that space is there at the base and being in space, every unit is energized, self-organized and recognizing its relationship and fulfilling it. Now this one is seen in the case of the self as a unit. So I can see that I'm a unit of consciousness and I'm in space. I'm energized being in space the activities of desire, thought, expectation, they're all continuous in me. I am self-organized being in space. I exist in a definite order. So my activities are there in a definite order. 
the activity of imaging is there, analyzing and comparing is there, selecting and testing is there, and I have a potential to contemplate, understand, and realize. So all these activities are there in a different order. So I am able to have the activities in order. And the moment I am driven by preconditionings or sensations, then I can see that there is disharmony in the self. And that is also my self-organization. Because the moment I am dictated by some preconditioning or sensation, I feel unhappy. What is this? How do I feel unhappy? This is being self-organized. And being in space, I can recognize my relationship with other units and fulfill it. So the other unit can be a human being, the other unit can be some other unit in the nature. When I do, I feel happy. When I do not, I feel unhappy. So the participation is something definite. It's only that I'm not able to see that. And the moment I'm not able to see that, I feel unhappy. The moment I'm able to see that, I feel happy. Now this is being self-organized, being in space, isn't it? So with this realization, I live with authenticity in continuity. And that means that when I'm able to realize the whole existence as coexistence, the other activities also get in order. Now detailing further upon understanding. So understanding means understanding of harmony, that is self-organization in the nature. All units in nature can be classified into four orders. These units and the four orders have definite innateness, that is self-organization, which can be understood. So we had briefly talked about it. In fact, we had talked about it in previous course also, and the previous lecture, we just had a look at it very briefly, but we'll detail upon it in following lectures. So this definiteness, which is born out of understanding, leads to a feeling of bliss. When I understand this, I'm determined to live with my self-organization, my innateness, my harmony, and I facilitate the self-organization of other units. So I'm able to see the innateness of each and every order. So what is the innateness of physical order? What is the innateness of bio order? What is the innateness of animal order? And what is the innateness of human order? This is something to be understood. And the more I'm able to understand this, I'm able to participate in the harmony of other units also, of other orders also. And when I have this understanding, it gives me a state of bliss. I feel in a state of bliss within because I'm able to see the reality as it is. I'm able to see the innateness of every unit, of every order as it is, isn't it? Now going further, talking about the activity of contemplation. So I'm able to contemplate on the participation in larger order. Now every unit has a definite participation in existence, a definite role to play in this existence. So every atom, every molecule of the soil has a definite role to play in the existence. Every leaf of the plant has a definite role to play in the existence. You also have a definite role to play in the existence, isn't it? So to be able to see this role, this participation in relationship with other units is called as contemplation. In case of human being, it means trying to see what is my role in this existence? Try to find out. What is my participation in the larger order? the self, the family, society, nature, existence. Do I have some role? Is it something that depends on me or is it something that is definite? It is very much there, only that I'm not able to see it. What do you think? Do I have to create this harmony? Do I have to create this participation? Or it is already there, I only have to see it as it is. So what is my value in this existence? And that is something called as human value. Now this course is on human value and that is essentially to mean that there is a definite participation of human being in this entire nature, in this entire existence. I need to understand this, I need to contemplate upon this, I need to live accordingly. The relationship of mutual fulfillment with the human being leads to mutual happiness and essentially if you see this mutual happiness, this competence to live with mutual happiness in mutual relations helps me develop competence to participate in undivided society. And what are those feelings? They are trust, respect, affection. We have talked about all these feelings of love. Now these all feelings are the participation of the self with other self, isn't it? Now with this, I can see that I have a definite role to play as a human being. Then my desire is to fulfill that definite role. My desires become definite. I can see that there's provision for fulfillment of these definite desires in nature. I want to have trust and I can always trust. I want to have respect, the feeling of respect in me, and I can always respect the other. 
I want to have the feeling of affection, I can always have the affection for the other. Are you able to see this? In fact, the things which come very naturally to me, many times, we are not able to appreciate it. But this is something to be understood, this is something to be appreciated. So when able to contemplate upon the participation, then this gives me satisfaction, contentment. Here, based on the contemplation of my participation in the larger order, at every level of my living, my desires get definite, my imaging gets definite, and this gives me satisfaction. So taking an example, when I'm able to see my participation with physical facilities, so I want to see that the physical facilities are required only for the body, and they're all required in limited quantity, and they're all temporary, and this gives me contentment. I'm able to see that, yes, whatever I require in terms of physical facilities are required only for the body and they are required in limited quantity. If I have more than that, I feel prosperous. So my desires get definite based on this contemplation. Think over it. Are you able to see some contentment in you, satisfaction in you, since you began with the process of self-exploration? I hope you must be. The moment you are able to see that the need for physical facility is limited in quantity and you have more than that, you feel prosperous. Otherwise, you might be accumulating a lot of physical facilities, but still not feeling prosperous. Now this prosperity, this feeling of prosperity is a part of contentment. Similarly, when I'm able to see my role with the other human being, I'm able to see the feeling of trust, respect. So I feel satisfied in the relationship. I can see that, yes, I can ensure mutual happiness. If I have these feelings in me, I can always relate to the other without any fear, without any doubt, without any apprehension, revenge. I'm able to very naturally relate to the other. So all these points are worth pondering upon, worth contemplating upon, think over them. Try to make it out. Now, when you go to see the self working with imagination on the basis of sensation and preconditioning, so this is the state of the self. So the block B1 is there, but it is not active. It is inactive. The activities are not activated. Only block B2 is activated where you have the activities of imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, and testing based on which my behavior, work, and participation, based on which I am having behavior and work, and they are unguided because the complete imagination is either instilled by preconditioning or sensation and partly guided by my natural acceptance. But since I'm not able to see the reality, since the activities of realization, understanding and contemplation are not activated, so there is disharmony. So at the level of comparing, I have unguided senses, health and profit. At the level of testing, I have unguided sensation. So this is the state of the deluded self, the self that is working with imagination on the basis of sensation and preconditioning. But when I'm able to know the reality as it is, I want to see the thing in its entirety, in its completeness. And when all these activities of block B1, that is realization, authentication, understanding, determination, and contemplation are fully activated, then my complete imagination is guided by these activities. And there's harmony in the self. And then my behavior, work, and participation in the larger order are guided, completely guided. So I'm able to contemplate upon the relationship that is the natural characteristic, that is the participation in the larger order. So at the level of contemplation, I'm able to have this clarity. Now at the level of understanding, I'm able to have the clarity of harmony in the nature and harmony essentially means the self-organization, the innateness. And at the level of realization, I have the clarity of coexistence and existence that is submergence of nature in space. So ultimately each one of us, if you see why we are working, what we need to do, to be happy, we need to activate these activities in block B1. This is the ultimate goal, so to say. Now the content of these activities with the knowing has been written here. So re realization means clarity of coexistence in the existence that is submergence. Understanding means clarity of harmony in the nature, self-organization and innateness. And contemplation means clarity of the relationship, the natural characteristic that is the participation in the larger order. And when I have this clarity in me, then 
coexistence, harmony, and justice guide my senses, health, and profit. So no longer they are unguided. No longer the comparing is unguided, dictated, enslaved. But it is now guided by right understanding. It is now guided by knowing. Similarly, the testing is guided because the goal and value now guide my sensation. So sensation is not a problem in itself. It's only that if I try to become happy through sensation, then I get enslaved. I get dictated. But when the right understanding is ensured in me, then my sensation is guided. And with that, when I participate with the human being, my behavior is mutually fulfilling. When I participate with the rest of nature, my work is mutually fulfilling. And when I participate in the larger order, right, from family order to the world family order, I'm able to participate in the universal human order. And this is what we really want to be, isn't it? So the same thing written here, the Hindi words have been included. Now further, we'll talk about these higher activities of the self, that is the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization in detail in lecture 12. This brief discussion is in the context of defining the process of knowing. And through this process of knowing, we can explore into the whole existence. So that was just to explain what this process is. So earlier, if you remember, we had talked about the process of self-exploration. Now, since we are able to understand the higher activity of the self, so we can be more particular in terms of defining the process. So essentially, the process is to activate these higher activities of contemplation, understanding, and realization. Now, we can take a homework from here. So knowing is a specific need and activity of the self. So you can elaborate on what exactly is to be known and which specific activities of the self are involved. So based on the lecture that we had today, try to make it out. Next, try to see whether everything is to be known. Next, is everything to be known definite and universal or are there certain things that are indefinite? So when we talk about the content of knowing, try to make out. So is the participation definite of every, every unit? Is the participation definite of every unit? Is the harmony there innately in every unit? Is every unit submerged in space? So whether all these things is definite and universal, or there are certain things which are indefinite. Thirdly, when you are seeing a reality, what is the range of your seeing? Testing, comparing, contemplation, where are you right now? Try to make it out. So it might be the case that presently we are only operating at the level of testing and comparing, but we need to activate contemplation. We need to activate understanding. We need to activate realization. So to sum up the whole thing, in this lecture, we talked about the knower, the known and the process of knowing. We saw that it is the self, which is the knower. The content of knowing is the entire existence. And the, and the process of knowing is awakening to the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization. Thank you.